Hello, this is Haiku here for the next installment of my Modern Horizons 3 Arena Popper set review. Moving on to the colorless, multicolored uh, cards and the lands. Um, as a reminder, we're going to be having our Historic Popper tournament after MH3 gets released on Arena. So come uh, check out our Discord, which is linked down below in the in description. So you can uh, come talk about the set spoilers and see how to join our tournament as well as our ladder, ladder season. All right, so I'm gonna start off with the lands here. So um, it's a cycle of all, uh, all the lands, uh, ten, uh, 10 color pairs, yeah, yeah, 10, 10, yeah. I don't know why there's OP is some of the repeated. Um, but uh, very solid cards. Um, they kind of fit well with the uh, colorless uh, theme uh, of the set. Uh, and then these are going to be pretty solid. I like that they did the whole cycle, both and, uh, wedge and shards. Uh, so then basically three color decks can have access to these. And then two color decks have basically infinite as many as they want to play. Uh, and so I think these are just going to be just solid uh, players in three color decks. Um, three color decks now kind of have um, a lot of fixing as long as you're willing to stomach uh, having too many tap lands. So uh, they're solid. Um, the, the best part about them is the fact that they don't have cost mana to uh, sack. So they're evolving wilds for those three colors at worst. Uh, but then the ability to be able to tap for colorless can really help decks smooth out their mana curve a little bit better. Um, so solid cards. The, the cycling is not relevant for any of these cards, I don't think, for constructive play. Uh, you know, the, the cards, the, the games don't go that long that um, I don't think it's really going to be that that interesting to cycle. All right, so starting with the multicolored cards, very, very powerful cards. Uh, unfortunately, this one's not too powerful. Um, it gets energy, but again, the, the issue with energy, it's not providing a permanent effect. Um, so not quite uh, constructive playable. Cranial Ram. So this is the one that in uh, Paper Popper was alluded to because it's uh, basically cranial plating, um, slightly different, potentially slightly worse, you could argue. So the living weapon part is obviously the better part, um, so that's kind of cool. But then um, cranial plating having instant speed equip makes it uh, a little bit better than this, and then being colorless allows you to put it into different decks. Um, this forcing red black is not too big of a deal. Most of the affinity decks were already red black, but um, they're definitely going to play this. Um, so uh, this kind of leads to discussion of kind of what makes a healthy meta because um, uh, artifact has answers in almost every color um, except for black. Um, red, green, and white all have excellent artifact removal spells. Uh, that are attached to creatures, that are attached to value spells um, to deal with it. Um, uh, blue has a null uh, as a counter spell and also has like negate and other kind of counters that can kind of deal with this card. Black doesn't really, uh, black has so many other tools I don't really care much, but the issue is it's not just how, uh, if, a car, if, if a card can get answered, or if a deck can get answered, it's also how much sideboard space do you realistically have to dedicate to be able to answer this card? Um, and you have to dedicate a lot. Um, I, uh, one of the reasons why I think green is gonna be a, a kind of a premier color now is it got a lot of great cards, but a pick your poison is gonna be really great against the bridge lands uh, as a way to, for one mana to stone rain your opponent uh just gonna set back uh, um, the affinity decks really really well um so um i would have my eye on this card as far as um how powerful it's going to be in historic popper vintage popper you know obviously it's going to get dictated what the popper format panel decides if it's going to be legal given gavin is already saying that it's probably going to get banned um i wouldn't expect this to stick stick around too long in vintage popper um Historic Popper actually, this card might be famous enough or might draw enough eyes that um, the next time that Historic Popper is played um, on Arena as a midweek magic, it might actually get, get the ban hammer too. I'll be interesting to see that uh, on the next uh, midweek magic for Popper. By the way, Wizards, please add Popper Q so we don't 
have to rely on our Discord server. Where our Discord server is great if you wanted to talk about Popper on Arena, but uh, it would be nice to have a built-in queue for uh, Popper on the client. All right. Moving on, I think I talked about this card and Evil Wit the most, and I think they're the two standout cards of the set for um, Arena Popper. All right, Cyclops Superconductor. Uh, it's an energy card. Uh, unfortunately, it's not really where energy kind of wants to be at. Um, there's enough stuff that exiles, and so you won't get the die trigger. Um, so I don't think this is kind of really where a red-blue um, energy deck wants to be. Expanding Ooze. This is a solid card. I was playing with it, um, uh, as I spoke before, with the Evo Wit deck. Um, I was trying to see its combo potential as well as its just grindy green-black mid-range potential. And um, this was the other thread I was using. Uh, so I like that this uh, basically can kind of continue to trigger your Evo Wit every time it attacks. It's a very excellent threat on its own. Um, so um, I like this card. Um, but it really only goes into that green-black deck. Maybe you could even play a Jun deck um, with this as your top end as a creature beatdown and just kind of use the efficient removal spells available in those colors. Um, so a solid card. Um, I think as we get more and more creatures and stuff gets power crept, this won't uh, see as much play, but it's fine. It is an ooze creature type, which matters for slime against the humanity, but... Um, that, that deck just wants to play all slimes. It doesn't really want to play these other cards that don't count for your slimes. Faithful Watchdog. This is going to be uh, the premier uh, two-drop in uh, Selesnya Colors. Uh, it plays really well with all of the themes of Selesnya that we have in Historic and Vintage Popper. Plays well with Mutate, plays well with Auras, plays well with uh, Proliferate. Um, just excellent card. Um, it, um, there's really no downsides to the three plus one plus one counters instead of being a three three, and it's really all upside. So, um, excellent card. Um, gonna see a lot of play if Selesnya aggro is a thing. This might enable Selesnya aggro to be a thing, uh, but I think uh, Selesnya is gonna be um, let, uh, kind of relegated to be playing a combo with Evo Wit combo rather than uh, aggro. Obstinate Gargoyle. Um, this this actually seems like more a card that would have been in a regular set. It's not it's not that good. Um, it does work with Mogwarts if you wanted another creature to combo with Mogwarts, uh, but uh, yeah, just uh, doesn't work with your Goblin Sack creatures. So then you have to have another Sack outlet. It just it doesn't fit, um, um, and so it doesn't do enough. Um, there was Breathless Knight uh, as a viable deck, but now there's so much. Graveyard synergy decks that everyone has to pack enough graveyard hate that kind of incidentally Breathless Knight also got kind of hated out of the meta. Um, so I don't think this is uh, where you want to be and you, it's not good enough to build around. Riddled Rate Gargoyle. Now this is an interesting card for the energy deck. Um, so the energy deck, like I said, is probably going to be a Just Sky color. Um, uh, and so... This is kind of a reasonable threat at the beginning of the game. You know, you get a flying 2-2, so it can block, it can kind of chip in for some damage. It can give you energy when it comes in. And then if you do need to gain life, then uh, you can uh, gain life. And what's really nice about this card is you didn't have to attack with this card to get the trigger. So it's just you, whenever you attack, so you can play this card, attack in with another creature without spending any mana, give that creature life link. Uh, and gain a little bit of life against uh, aggro deck. Um, so it might see play in a control deck, might be more like of a sideboard card, but I wouldn't be surprised if maybe like one gets main deck um, play as just kind of uh, just a reasonable creature to play. Uh, certainly going to be outclassed if you're just out at all short on, on sideboard or main deck space, but um, it's just an interesting card that does a few good things that we haven't seen before. Snapping Void Crawl. Um, this is very interesting because it gives you value um, later in the game and it ramps you. But um, the weakest part of this card is three toughness. All of the uh, removal in uh, black and red deal with three toughness. And then white um, with um, Patriarch's Humiliation uh, is frequently going to be able to kill this. Uh, at least we would be able to neuter this. Um, so I don't think this um, is going to be able to be see play. All right, Sneaky Snacker. 
Uh, this is a great card. Even though it says Demir, this card, I would argue, is not going to be in Demir. This is going to be in either uh, Is It or uh, Rakdos. Um, I don't think you want to go full on um, Demir for this card. There's just not enough um, enablers in those colors. So Is It, you get to play all of the discard draw twos that are available. So Tormenting Voice, the new one, which is um, uh, Highway Robbery. Uh, that one is going to be great with this card because you discard and then you draw the two and again because they're sorcery speed you've already drawn one for your turn so all of the ones that you have in your graveyard come back off of that trigger of that one spell so those red spells that discard or discard then draw are going to be excellent with this card um, and so I would play this more like uh, like Phoenix, uh, there's a Demir Phoenix deck. It's funny that's the, the you play Demir, but then Phoenix is red, and then this is a Demir color, but you play Is It um, to get around it. And then the other deck that this is going to uh, slot pretty well into is in uh, Rakdos Madness. Uh, again, just a, car, a creature that you discard, and then you can get it back pretty easily. Um, you probably want to retool the deck to play a lot more of the draw twos, the discard draw twos. Uh, but it's certainly possible um, to um, get this going. It doesn't quite play well. I mean, it would have been so busted if it also played well with um, Faceless Looting, uh, but still fine. Yeah, if we ever got a Faceless Looting that discard then draw, whew. but I, I guess they couldn't play that, be or they couldn't print that because um, if you're empty handed, that would have been just a busted draw too. Uh, but yeah, I don't think we needed ways to make Faceless Looting even better. But uh, it's going to be a solid card. Again, m maybe it's going to see play in Demir decks, but I think mostly its home is going to be in Is It uh, or Rakdos decks uh, that are just going to be discarding it and bringing it back without casting the blue um, part of this card or the or the black part. All right, Writhing Chrysalis. Um, it's a solid creature. You know, it's a it it, it can basically at instant speed anytime become a four five. And then it also can grow even more if there's any other sacrifices going down. Um, but I just don't think red green is going to want this. Red green really likes cards that are red or green so they can get the cost reducer from their Anarchomancer. This, unfortunately, the Devoid is a bet downside for that deck. Um, the only deck that I could see this kind of slotting into is a sacrifice deck that really gets um, a lot of triggers off of sacrifice. So like a Gardens deck. Um, but even then, this is kind of on the expenses side for that deck um, that it might not uh, see play, even though it's a very strong card, just uh, doesn't do quite enough to see constructed play in my mind. Drenier and Lurker. So getting into the colorist cards, but they kind of are colored because their cycling is a colored cost. Um, these are reasonable reanimator targets, but they're just not the best. Um, you really need some either Hexproof or unblockability uh, on this card to really um, abuse it. Um, but uh, an early game cycle, you get to ramp yourself a little bit. It's kind of like a, a popper's version of um, Shark Typhoon. And then you could eventually cast it for the full cost, but it's not as game ending as Shark Typhoon is in, um, in those formats that play it. Uh, but eh, it's just a reasonable card. And then this is the, the green equivalent. Um, the same thing, um, I would say probably the Vigilance 7-7 seven, seven is more relevant than a 6-8. I think you just want that extra power to finish the game in three swings rather than four swings, uh, even if you get a little bit of incidental damage in. Um, so I think the, uh, the blue version is probably gonna see more play because blue is gonna like the instant speed cycle for value a lot more than green can use it. All right, well, that covers all of Modern Horizons. Um, it's going to be a very, very powerful set. Um, it, I, I, you know, put it at even more powerful than um, and meta-defining than uh, LOTR was on Arena. Um, hopefully, eventually, we get um, the other Modern Horizons sets, you know, somehow added so we can get some of those other powerful cards. But uh, for now, these um, are really excellent. Open up some new decks that are going to be interesting. And I really like that it, it ended up, I don't know if, uh, well, I don't think Wizards um, kind of planned this, but green um, really got a nice buff uh, with this set. Um, so green as a constructed um, on Arena, Popper, 
was struggling and now it, now it has some life here. All right, uh, again, reminder, if you wanna come play with these cards, deck builds, talk about uh, Popper on Arena, come join our Discord, it's down in the description. Uh, we look forward, all are welcome. See ya.